Hi everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions with a Vegas Pro Tips and Tricks video. By default, when putting any form of media into the timeline on Vegas, the sampling feature will be enabled. If you look at a video with a lot of movement frame by frame, you'll notice that there's a ghost-like effect, which can be an eyesore. This is good because on lower frame rate videos, it does actually improve it slightly. However, if you're using higher frame rate, you'll want to turn this off because resampling can also make your playback seem very choppy and not enjoyable to look at. So play around with this, see if disabling resampling does you any favors or not. Normally it tends to be beneficial on low frame rate videos such as 20 to 35 frames per second, but if you're dealing with fast paced, high frame rate videos, you'll notice some ghosting and it won't look very nice. To do this, hit the D key on the keyboard twice. This will change your cursor to have a rectangle over it. You'll then want to scroll out and highlight all of the video layers in your project from the end all the way to the beginning. Make sure not to include any audio layers when you're doing this. Once you've done this, right click on the video, go down to switches, click on disable resample and the effect will be gone. Again, turn this on, turn this off. It all depends on your source media as will most things during this video. Next are the audio levels. This is one of the main aspects that people will overlook. However, viewers are much more likely to notice this because on your videos, if it's quiet, they'll turn their volume way up and then they'll flick to another video and realize that they're getting screamed at because on your video, they had to turn the volume up because you made it too quiet. When you're in Vegas, make sure you keep an eye on the volume meter. Look where the green bar generally stays. Does a red box appear with numbers when the audio is playing back? Or do the numbers stick to a relatively low point such as minus 21 dB? You should keep your audio at around minus six decibels, if not slightly lower, as you'll be able to boost it in the editing process later on. You'll want to avoid clipping. This is where the audio goes above zero decibels, which can make the audio sound distorted and unpleasant to the listener. Try to get your audio right first time in the recording process so that you have to do minimal editing, because even if you have the best audio editing ever, having an awful audio source won't do you any favors. Boom! Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three quick maths. Audio effects and plugins. Not many people talk about these, but they can be really handy. You can add multiple ones of these, such as volume, distortion, delay, amplitude, chorus, reverb, name it. There are plenty to choose from and plenty to play around with. Adding the plugins to your tracks is very simple. Just click on the plugin you want to use, then click add, then it will add it to that track. Ultimately, these plugins give you much more creative control about your audio instead of just the basic speed up, slow down, increase volume, decrease volume. There's far more to audio editing than people realize, and it really does pay off when you do it well. When you're editing your video, you want to see it in its best quality possible. However, depending on how powerful your PC is where you may be having a hard time playing it back. The best thing to do in this case is lower the quality such as preview auto or half, or even maybe draft worst case scenario. If your computer isn't up to newer versions of Sony Vegas, like this one, I would recommend old versions of Sony Vegas such as eight to 10, maybe even movie studio version, as that can potentially help. Using many video effects can also slow down your video preview depending on the intensity. So try to use less if you wish to view your playback as a more suitable frame rate. To be fair, most people's PCs should be able to handle at least good preview quality when you're editing, but it's just something to be aware of the fact that if you're trying to get the best out of your PC, maybe you don't have the best PC in the world because ultimately, even if you just have preview on half, you can just render the video review it yourself in all its glory, and if you don't like it, just go and render it again. I know it takes more time, but hey, that's the sacrifices of having perhaps a less powerful machine. Mumbo number five. And last on the list is keyboard shortcuts. These are fairly self-explanatory. It just means that you don't have to go in menus looking for certain features when you can just hit certain keystrokes to get where you want to be. 
for example S to split the clip, N to make the track numbers appear, D to switch the mouse cursors, and so on. On the screen now shows you that there's plenty of these to play around with. I've also included a link in the description with these shortcuts so that you can say I need that one, I don't need this one. You can just go through it and determine what works best for you. Thank you very much for watching this video. This has been Adam from Ads Productions with Vegas Pro Tips and Tricks.